I'm afraid because I know when the, the five, six, seven, eight comes and the lights are there and the action and the audience and you have to open your mouth and it has to be there. And that pressure, I'm like, if we put the, the big note at the end of the Defying Gravity as the goal, it has to be scored every night. Mm -hmm. Every single night, it has to be. Because the second that you don't score it, so take us back to the beginning, where does it start? I started watching Michael Jackson at the age of four. And I, I remember watching the tapes like over and over and over. And I remember saying to my mom, I was like, pointing at the stage and going like, this is this is what I want to do. Introducing Johnny Bishop from a dream of being in The Lion King as a kid to starring in some of the biggest West End shows like Moulin Rouge, Hamilton and In the Heights and has appeared on film in The Little Mermaid and Mary Poppins Returns. I think there's definitely something about being on stage. I know that something comes alive. It's almost like you're like soaring. It just, the thing opens up and you're there. I think I also have this thing in my mind where it's possible. If, if they can do it, I can do it. Because they're not an alien, they're human. I remember the things open and the, the audience were just like, they just went wild. So I'm in this pose like this and I'm like, oh my Jesus. Like, I just hope <laughs> that I hit this note. Hello and welcome to the five minute call. This is a podcast where we take a deep dive into the stories of the people that make theatre happen. Today, we are talking to Johnny Bishop. Johnny has been in the original London cast of Moulin Rouge, the original London cast of Hamilton, In the Heights, and The Lion King. Johnny's also appeared on film in The Little Mermaid and Mary Poppins Returns. So, we're very interested in your story and we know you didn't start in London. Yes, that's right. So take us back to the beginning. Where does it start? The beginning. In the beginning. <laughs> Once upon a time. Um, so I grew up in Trinidad until I was 10 and I moved here to London at 10. I started watching Michael Jackson at the age of four. But just before that, actually, I I really loved the Spice Girls and my, my parents were like, we need to get him like a guy that he could like look at. <laughs> so my mom was like, she said to my dad, she was like, um, please, can you get like some, you know, videotapes or whatever. So he went and got Michael Jackson. And then I was like, wow. And I, I remember watching the TV like over and over and over. I just used to play his tapes like over and over and over. Uh, the Motown uh, performance, Motown 25, which he was doing Billie Jean. And then eventually I got all the costumes and everything. I had like the sparkly jacket, the sparkly socks. Like I've been full out from a very young age, always doing the most. And it's all on, on like my request. I, I want this, I want that, I want this. Basically I, I took part in a competition called 12 and Under, which is for basically kids who want to perform. And the funny story is my mom, when she was younger, she performed on it. So once they saw that I was like, sort of getting into this, they were like, great. My grandmother was like, oh, take him on the show. So my mom was like, okay, fine. We'll dress you up, we'll rehearse you. And my mom was like my choreographer, even though she's not like a choreographer <laughs> or dancer, but she used to watch me and she'd be like, you keep doing the same moves. You have to do more than, than this and also Michael, in in that Motown 25 performance he is singing as well so he's not only dancing I was just gonna dance so she was like you have to do more than what he was doing so we would sit there and she would write down the moves because this this is how she would best knew to choreograph the things so she's like okay you're gonna do a slow turn then you do the step 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 so we got that we did that and then I came first in the competition which was really fun and then I how went to the I'm I was like four when I was practicing. Wow. And then I must have been like six, five, six or seven maybe. So I, I came first and then, and then I got to the finals and I actually, I think I came second or something like that. And then from that point onwards, I think they were like, oh, this is good for you. Let's, let's sort of, um, you know, push you in this and see if we can support you. So then a show from London um, called Carnival Messiah came to Trinidad and the lady that produced it, uh, she lived in Leeds, uh, but she was a Trinidadian. So when she came, she brought some people from Leeds and then she also hired a bunch of locals. And, and this is where it kind of, the story kind of really pushes off. Uh, I got into the show, my aunt was the costume designer on the show. So she lives over here. And she was like, I think you should, to my mom, you know, let him come to the audition. I think the show would be great for him. So I go into the audition, I, I get in, and basically I was just a kid running around the stage having a blast. But we would have like 
10 hour rehearsals and stuff because there was a lot of people and I would get home and be like I want to do it again like I want to go back like now you know so this I loved it and I remember saying to my mom I was like pointing at the stage and going like this is this is like what I want to do and because there were some people from uh the UK that were in the show they were like you know what you should um you should audition for some schools out here in London so and then the thing is my my I know I'm jumping around but it all makes it t- mm-hmm. try and tie it back together <laughs> but my my dad's dad is British or was British because he passed now but um so in that way I had like a British passport and my aunt lived here so it was I had like these two sort of lucky stars if the, and sort of ways that actually it could work mm. if I actually got in to a school. So once that show finished, um, Lion King came to audition and Pippa came and she was auditioning for adults. But because I was like a child performer at the time and no, there were, aren't any boys doing this at that time in Trinidad. So I was probably one of like three boys. So then uh, I get into the room somehow because they're like, you have to see him. He's a little child. He's, you know, wants to do it. And I love Lion King. That was another thing I used to watch and repeat. And so I went in dressed as Michael Jackson to a Lion King audition, which is just like, <laughs> I can just imagine. It was just like, what's happening? You know, it just, yeah, you know, it's just like just doing too much from the beginning. Anyway, <laughs> you know, so then she, I wrote Pippa was like, look, it's just like, what's happening? So then she tells me, okay, the next time you need to come like, you know, a bit simpler. But just, yeah. So a year goes by, <laughs> she comes back and then I end up going back to the audition this time in like just a t-shirt, some shorts and a sandals. And then she says, she's like, you know, I guess that like they were happy with what I was doing, but you can't get it from here. We can take adults from here, but we can't take kids. So you should really go to this school, Sylvia Young, she recommended, I think it was that and maybe another school. And you need to be on an agency in London. And so it took like a couple of years, sort of me begging my parents. I was like, you guys are holding me back. Like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And they're like, what do we do with this child? Like, what's what's happening? And my, I have an older brother, brilliant, you know, like typical. But he he's so like, he's intelligent. He has the brains and then very sporty. So football and all these things. And I told my mom, I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do the sports. I don't want to do the football and the thing. And I, this is what I want to do. So eventually they were like, okay. She started calling around. We got the audition for Sylvia's. In Trinidad, we have primary school Mm -hmm. and then we have standard one, standard two, three, four, and five. And in five, you write your exam to go into secondary school. What do you guys call that? Like, do you, I mean. uh, We have SAT. SAT, right. In year six, yeah. So SAT. Our one is called common entrance. Okay. So I ended up missing that because it fell on the same day as my audition for Sylvia's in London. And I remember saying, apparently, like the story goes, my mom tells me this story that I told my brother, he, I saw him studying one time and he was older than me. So he was already past the SAT. He was in secondary school and I saw him studying all the stuff and I was like, I'm not going to do that. And my mom was like, yes, you are. You're going to write the exam. You're gonna... And then it happened that the exact same day as my exam was my audition. So I came over, I did the audition, and then I got a recall. So I think I had to come back. And then what I did was I wrote my exam further down the line. So the teachers had to like reteach me back at Trinidad, which they weren't actually very happy about. If I, <laughs> yeah, they, they weren't. Yeah, because that's the, that's the other thing, you know, because we were, because I think that the culture there is very academic driven. Um, I think at first there wasn't that much support for what I was doing. And then I think my parents got quite a bit of flack, probably from different yeah. sides. Some people were in support because they were like, oh, yeah, you know, he's doing good stuff. And but, yeah, it was kind of a bit tricky at that point. But huge thing for them to do. Yeah. Huge thing for them to support. And also in, kind of incredible that you knew your mind so clearly. Mm. That's about that. Yeah, I, mean, I don't I know. I, I knew yeah. I wanted to sing when I was eight. Like, no, no question. So right. I, can, I can find that in me but I think to, I I don't think I would have known it mm. so clearly to go yeah I can leave my family and travel well this is it yeah it's weird isn't it yeah I don't it's amazing I because yeah when I look back on that 
part of me it's it's yeah in some ways it is not a different identity but it's like the child version of me was very brave very just like and it wasn't like um proud or anything it was just that's what i want here we go and i'm going for it and and yes mommy i love you daddy i love you but i need to go that's that's how and so i remember them sort of being like oh god so i did get into the school and then my mom and dad were like okay to my aunt can you come live with you she's like great fan- fantastic but again everything was a sacrifice so my brother stayed in trinidad i came to live with my aunt um i lived in their living room so it's not like a big it's like a council flat you know so like and my cousin was in the other room and they my aunt and uncle stayed in the other room i lived there for many years and i i think we were always sacrificing at different levels to sort of make make it work i went to school here and it was i loved it i loved it tell us, I, tell us about life at theater school at theater like, school what's that like? brilliant <laughs> some people i do you know the thing is some people didn't didn't enjoy it but yeah. i loved it because yeah. the main thing was there were three days of academics and two days of vocational which was just like so you, you two days thursdays and fridays you're singing you're dancing you're acting and you basically to me it's just playing around like you're just having a ball mm-hmm. and the the first three days you have to focus and be like okay this is this is like science and maths and all these different things that you just never ever use again I loved it. And we did this thing um, called cabarets, which as as kids, what they would do is they would put us in like a group, a sort of select group, which again was very nice because I guess if you were working very hard and whatever, you would sort of get into this group. And we would travel around the UK doing like, well, not the UK, sometimes outside of London, doing performances at hotels. That was amazing. And we were dressed in costumes and stuff. It was whole medleys. And it's basically what is happening like in theatre and stuff. That's kind of like what we're training as, as kids. So it was, and some of the people that uh, were in these cabarets are still doing it now. And we did that right through. Uh, And also I think the teachers there were amazing because, I don't know, I think the kids are quite mature but also then we have to learn different things so they were just always supporting us and then helping us guiding us through because some kids were in shows so I did Lion King while I was at Sylvia's so you end up missing days and then what they used to do is they have this this thing called CW1s which I guess is like your classwork Mm -hmm. and they they write down what you missed so that you can always you get it like the next day when you come in so it was brilliant it was brilliant so what advice then would you give to a young performer that is going through that same kind of journey and they're in a, a, a sort of theatre school and they're doing performing whilst also studying? And how do you actually keep up academically? I mean, I will say that my my mom was on me because I guess like academic wise coming from that background, she's like, you have to, you know, so I think... First of all, if for the person that's doing it, if as much as you can do the work, I always, I think in everything, if you can't, like if you're going to just, just put your best foot forward, that's always like, so if you're on the train, do some work then. If you're, you know, you're at rehearsal, or you're in the dressing room or something or anywhere that you can do the work. And then I would say if there's anybody around them that can help support them, that's also really helpful. Because up till GCSEs, like my mom was like, supporting me because like mm-hmm. science and different things like that were very it's not that I can't do it I got great marks at the end of my uh, time doing GCSEs like really good ones but my mom sat with me like reading through the science books because uh, to me I was like I'm never going to use this and so she sat down and she was like we're going to read it together and sometimes you learn differently so I if I hear something and I see it I know it, I take it in a lot better than if I just sit in and read you know so I would say my advice is if the if you if the person can also find extra support because when you're you hitting the gig support at the time or did you feel like oh god I just don't want to be doing it no I was gr- I was grateful for because I knew I, I was going into the exams and I, I wanted to that's the other thing I am also a bit of like I don't want to say perfectionist because I'm letting go of that but like I want to do (laughs) yeah you know (laughs) oh my god (laughs) to my detriment um but uh yeah no I want to do well you know I I yeah I don't like to not do 
well. So I was at school, going back even to that first question about how was that life, I was very good, good two shoes at school, you know. Um, and so to even to your question, it's like, my thing was, what's the work? Nothing else. So the parties, the exploring at that age, and nothing, 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 nothing. Didn't come till a lot later because I think subconsciously, maybe it was probably embedded in me that I was like, a lot of sacrifices happened. So like my folks didn't come over, you know, I, I came by myself to live with my aunt. I was like, I need to make this work because I know, like I remember one time back in Trinidad, one of the teachers, I, I was, before we had to get into class, we had these lines. So we'd be in the courtyard and we have to line up and every uh, class would go into their different, you know, rooms or whatever it is. And I was in the line, but my feet were tapping around and I was moving and a teacher came up to me and she was like, what are you doing? You know, kind of thing. And like, and, and then they were like, you're getting too big for your boots. That was like, like a couple of years before I left, you're getting too big for your boots because I was... You know, I was seen as probably seemed fractious or like, um, you know, not focused or whatever, which I was. Again, I did really well in the school, but because of my mom was like, but yeah, I was always, yeah, wanting to do other stuff. So I guess when I came here, it was just, I have to really be in and make sure that this, this works because I know sometimes some of the people back at home may have been like, What's the, what are they doing? Mm. So then when I got into Lion King, I think that was like one of the sort of stamps, even from my parents to be like, look, like he did it, you know? I remember telling my mom, and she was like, oh. it's almost like, I think she always, she always believed that I could do it. But like, I think that is like a, like a real relief for them and almost like, oh my gosh, we really made this right choice to let this mm. child go at this age because this is a crazy thing. And why did we do that? And, and so my mom used to come up for like six months and then my mom's mom would come over because they could only stay for six months at a time mm -hmm. yeah so my grandmother would come up and and like look after me because my aunt was pretty busy all the time do, doing costumes and stuff so i'd see her of course and she'd look after me but so this it was like the three of them i had like three moms basically so you had them so they came on rotation basically, basically. because you were so young that you still yeah looking after wow yeah so they would take like they would take me to school or like wow. you know and all that kind of stuff um and so I think when I got into Lion King, it was really, that was like the, yeah, sort of stamp of like, yeah. okay. And even for myself, it's like, yeah, I knew I could do this. I knew it. Wow. Where did it go from there? So you've done oh, Lion King. Because yeah. everything that you're speaking about really is so passionate, yeah. but also like, you know, you kind of, I think you can, people can sort of get the impression that you commit a lot yeah and i yeah, think yeah. that's from working with you that's very very true and yeah. it's really interesting yeah. now seeing from an early age yeah just seeing like if you want something you yeah like, you go for it and i think yeah. that's a really great skill but i'm curious to know the sustainability of it because you did mention about perfectionism and how you're trying to let that go how yeah. does that factor in I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. So we did Mulan together, mm -hmm. and I think you came in mm -hmm. and and while we were working on auditions and stuff. I mean, it's hard. It's very hard because I think like I think I also have this thing in my mind where uh, it's possible. If if they can do it, I can do it because they're not an alien; they're human. So, which sometimes it's not really the case, you know. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I said, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> They are, they've been given a gift and that is theirs and I should, and this is what I have, you know, and this is what, but, so I will work till like, you know, so during Mulan, you know, that was, it was tough for me because I think vocally the requirements were, were tough and I, and my voice could do it for sure. It was doing it and we worked and stuff, but like the times that it wouldn't do it would make me go like, oh my God, you know, and so it, I think the perfectionism thing comes in there because if it doesn't happen, I'm like, what's wrong? Why can't you do it? Mm -hmm. And I, I think, so this, it's, it's sometimes that is hard to sustain being like on it all the time. But I do listen to, I think, you know, there's like a lot of motivational talks and stuff. And um, Les Brown, uh, he always says this, that I'll like, you know, yeah, you shoot for the moon and if you miss you land among the stars so 
that is like something that you know so i if i'm if i'm going in you i think you have to commit my mom always says this as well. She was just like, you know, if you're going to do anything, just put your best foot forward. So I think I, that's sort of been uh, yeah, embedded in me. Um, and yeah, you run into problems with it, but more than often, it serves you better than, than not. You know what I mean? Because I think people also love effort and work ethic and um, a person that like, tries and stuff like that i know like if i see that even because i teach and stuff and you know it's not like they don't need to be perfect and that's that's the thing that i have to take on board it's never that they're perfect Mm -hmm. what what you're attracted to is the fight the the bite the passion the you know that thing that makes you feel something so i don't know i mean i i try to manage it i try to have a lot more self-love or practice that you know, it's art, and it, at that at some point, it it becomes, it can be messy when you're trying to get your your goal, or even for, not even in art, everything else. You know, athletes are the same. If you have to really run towards whatever you you're going for. I mean, I was saying yeah. to Warren earlier. I think you you have one of the strongest work and practice practice e- yeah. ethics of oh God. of anyone I've worked with. Um, it's too much. <laughs> sometimes it's overdone <laughs> oh my god i'm on holiday and i'm like blowing straws like blowing bubbles and so i literally I, that's me yeah it's but also a lot. you seem to have it's interesting you're you're saying about you know you always assume that it is possible because you have such an open mentality to learning and to going down what i call the rabbit hole and finding out what's oh, at yeah. the other end of it yeah. like you're very open to that there's no there doesn't seem to be fear that mm. stops you exploring something right yeah mm. there's there's never fear of well but what if i lose this tone in the in the pursuit of, of another yeah. like yeah. you the the evolution of your vocal qualities has been beautifully organic because you're never you're never kind of going no 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 i just want to stay here just let me stay here right just, right right open to okay. and you're also incredibly self motivated which I wonder if you think, does that come from coming here alone? Yeah. I do wonder about that sometimes as well. It's interesting you raise it because like, because now it's been, I guess, 20 years and I still feel like a, a push, but like I just, now it's like, I feel like I'm more choosy to what I do, but it, there's definitely still this like, I don't know what it is, like an energy. It's like a bite like I I, I want to do this I want to achieve this I still which yeah from young I guess I, I don't know if it's that move that made me do that or like now it's just habit mm. so because my habit is to to push 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 mm. until I achieve the thing that I want mm. um, I don't know I don't know exactly what what is keeping me going like that but I'm grateful that it's there mm. um, you know and that I still I'm enjoying it but I think sometimes the part, and to go back to even what you're saying, Oren, it's like, I need to be careful because then the joy comes out if you're fighting mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's kind of, I think sometimes what I experienced on Mulan was that like, as amazing and like, there were some highs for me in the show that I loved. And like, I looking back on it, like, I adore it. I adore that we got to do these award shows. I adore the things that I sang, that my voice was doing those things. And then there's also this other part, which I guess people don't really know, because you won't know when the curtains come up, we're all glamoured up. and But you, there's this other side that is, is hard, is very lonely, is very tough. Um, and yeah and and at that point it's i'm i'm intentionally in my habit going to these motivational talks to help me to continue Mm -hmm. it's because i think it may appear that i'm like i'm always on the thing but actually sometimes i think it comes out of fear my drive to almost like not fair to fail but like fair to not be excellent at, at like what I think I should be so it should be excellent in the show so I'm gonna I have to come and see you and have to have all these lessons I have to make sure that it's or if it's the audition I need to be able to present the right thing and it has to be brilliant so I have to do all these lessons to make sure that how it doesn't mishap when I'm 
you see what I mean? So like sometimes it's not always, I don't think for me, out of a positive thing that mm. I'm gonna be brave and I'm just working hard and I love it. It's sometimes it's like, I'm, I'm afraid because I know when the, the five, six, seven, eight comes and the lights are there and the action and the audience and you have to open your mouth and it has to be there. And that pressure, I'm like, so I need to be as best prepared mm. for it. So some, I think before when I was a kid, I think it was just happening. It wasn't really, mm. I was just running. And now sometimes it's like, you, are you sure you're ready? Mm. How, how can you make yourself as ready as possible? Um, so that you can at least try and feel as comfortable as possible versus mm. before. What would yeah. happen if it went wrong? I was just gonna, gonna say that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing. That's yeah. the thing. Well, actually, uh, I think internally it sometimes affects me. Because I remember I was in a rehearsal and one time and things didn't go right. And, you know, and I and I think that stuff, you do hold on to it. But then I know it pushed me to get the rest of the stuff. So because of that experience, a, a bunch of other amazing things happened. Mm -hmm. And so that's, yeah, it's a good question because I feel like I'm letting, I'm definitely feeling a different place now. It's like maybe a year ago. I don't know if that's just because I'm not having to do the thing every day. But if it happens, if you went wrong, you go wrong. That's the thing. <laughs> and that's what I'm, I'm trying to learn and to enjoy. Like even if I'm taking like a dance class and stuff, that's the other thing. So in dance, which I think is different from the acting discipline and the singing discipline. There is a strive for perfection. Ballet, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, when you're taking those things, it is, it's so strict. And I was also in a hip hop company uh, when I was at Sylvia. So year 10 and 11, I was in this hip hop company and they were all older than me. So I was like the youngest one, um, but they let me in because I used to take their classes outside of uh, their company. And I put my hat like down to that. They are literally, Cisco Gomez and Kimberly Taylor, like fantastic. They were trained, trained me. And I'm so grateful to them because, but it was hard. It was hard. Like, you know, it's, it, you're, you're, you're having to be so, um, like a dart, you know, darts, like, and it's the bullseye. That's what I think in, in the entertainment industry or like as performers, that's what I feel is sometimes different to like athletes. They're, they're amazing. And, and like, for instance, like a footballer. Yes, they want to score the goal. But if they don't score the goal, that's okay. That's part of the game. Boom, boom, boom. I, if, if we put the, the big note at the end of the defying gravity as the goal, it has to be scored every night. Mm -hmm. Every single night. It has to be. Because the second that you don't score it, what's wrong with them? Yeah. They're busted. Or you know what I mean? Like and how and so you have to really hit it so i think that part of things i think really that that discipline and probably because i trained in it a lot and even now teaching it there is that that sort of discipline but then it flips sometimes to the other side of you want it to be perfect mm -hmm. and then when you get to singing and stuff i feel like you can make sounds that are not perfect but it is authentic and it is beautiful and it's the right thing for that moment and that's okay and it's brilliant and then when you get to acting I remember I was I was doing a lot of acting classes in the pandemic and um it's like the reverse they don't want anything perfect they don't want anything showed you can't place this here you don't think about that what you're thinking about is this thing and what we want is I just want to see the mess and in dance sometimes you you clean up all of it you just and you look in the mirror, you know, we work with mirrors a lot. So you're always striving for the matching arm of this person, this person, this person. Okay, our arms are there and then our arms are there. Perfect. And then the head and the chin is to that detail. Do you know what I mean? So and then you put that into, I think sometimes you just you walk with that. So as a as, teacher, do you yeah. do you think it's possible to teach dance and maintain a healthy perspective on that? Perfection. I'm interested because you're now going at it from the other end. You're yeah. You're now at the front of the class. Do yeah. you feel that you need to to make a change in how it's taught? Do you feel that it's possible mm. to make a change? You know, even like my, my friend Cisco, the one who taught me. You know, like even I think as we go along, like even his methods of teaching have changed. He's still strict, 
but then there's also a lot of like love and I think that I, I think you know some people probably manage this better than others but I, I think you have to have a certain amount of hold on them or on on students or whoever is taking the class because you, um, the the good thing about the fair based sort of training in some way or the fire training uh, where there is like that heat breeds results because you do something the students will do something that they didn't think that they could do so you could get that result out of them and then I think on the other side you just have to have like as soon as the the, the class finishes know that it's that they can be comfortable around you or loving with you or that kind of stuff you know so that so that there's a balance in terms of if I think I could change not change it not particularly because I think it's so widespread and I also feel that like a lot of the people that I look up to, uh, their training may have been very, very tough, yeah. like super tough. And, and then but when I see them on the stage, I'm like, I want to be like them. So I can't say, you know, but I can only do, I guess, what I'll do, which is I try and have like a, a balance of like, you know, you, you do have to push them because um, if they don't feel the, the toughness of it, the other part is when they get into the industry, um, then they're not aware of what circumstances they can come into. And so, and then I think it also just helps them to be a bit more on the ball, on, a little bit on their toes, mm -hmm. which I feel like we all are when, when we get into a room because we've seen how different things happen. And then you just, you try and support them as much as you can or t at least let them know that the toughness is coming from a place where we want them to succeed. You know, as, as long as I think those sort of lines are made clear or sort of or those are givens, then then I think it's it's good. It's really interesting because I think that's yeah. quite different from my experience of coaching. Yeah. I don't, and I'm, you? You know, I'm sitting and thinking, could I coach with with that? Yeah. I think we are always looking for excellence. We're always searching for mm the most and the best that your voice can produce I genuinely think it's counterproductive in the singing realm I think so too and yeah it's, and it's interesting to me that 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 the two disciplines should be so different, different. because we're still talking about the body we're still talking about yeah muscles. you're right you're right but I think you're we're fundamentally using the body differently yeah. I think with with dance there is a greater sense of precision and control over everything Whereas with singing, if we had that level of control and tension, I think we lose a lot of the a, a lot of what we want from the voice because we're introducing more constraints. I think singing is more freeing. I mean, obviously, dance is very freeing. Yeah. But in a very different way. Yeah. What's your experience of it within your so physical well, experience? Singing, and I for me, and I think for a lot of People would probably come from the dance side. I've heard this as well. I would say it sometimes is a very vulner vulnerable place. Mm. That is powerful, but it's also on the flip side quite scary to sometimes open up. But I do. I have experienced that moment where I think I, w I was doing in the Heights. I really loved that show, and I was covering a part. And I remember going on stage, and this this part had to sing more. And there was like this rap section, and you stand on this chair, and you like you sort of like go out to the audience like with your hand and you're like rapping this this thing and it, rap is like amazing and I'm like I'm not a rapper so I was <laughs> like I need to get this together because these people are looking at me thinking that I can rap these words and I remember feeling it was almost like say my part had these like little pretty wings like this was like the part that I would do and that's I had a role but I covered another role and when I got into that role it was like the, the, the wings just went shh out and it was amazing and uh i've definitely like through mulan i felt lots of times where it it just felt like free it's almost like you're like soaring you just the thing opens up and you're there and it's like this amazing experience but then i think with dance it's different where i just it's almost like for me the music is there and you're just you're just in and i remember i spoke to one of my friends recently and he said what do you think about when you're dancing and i was like this sounds so corny, but it's like what Billy Elliot said. It's like, you you know, he's like, I suppose it's like forgetting, losing who you are, right? The whole lyrics and he's like, electricity. <laughs> you literally just, you're just in. I don't, I 
this to some point you don't really think at some point you might be like oh gosh i hope i hit this step correctly boom okay that's great now it's done and i'm i'm going but i was going to say that i think it's different for teaching singing and dance i mean mostly you would be working one on one yes right so we usually work i'm working with like a group of like 20 mm. or 25 mm. sometimes a lot bigger mm. and then the idea is to get that whole mass moving in the same direction in the same way with yeah. all the dynamics and i want to see it correctly you know what i mean yeah. so you're just like and then there's you know usually some classes are brilliant and you have people that have the mindset of like we're here to work boom 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 and i see it even like you know because i teach at a college so you, you have different energies for every group it's so interesting. You're teaching yeah. the same thing oh, yeah. to each group. And one ta- one group can come in and the class is like on fire. It's like fireworks and everything. And it's just like soaring. You're just like, oh, this is a breeze. You get to the next class and you're like, why does it look like this? Like what's <laughs> happening? Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, what's going on? And you, and you do and you see that and you're like, it's a bit different. Because I feel like if you were... Like if both, because both of you all have worked with me, if you were strict with me, like while I was singing and stuff, I'd be like, this is too much. Yeah. It's too much because you have to, it's almost like it's the reverse of that. You're always having to let go of everything for it to like open up, Yeah. you know? So it's you and you, and I do feel like dances can be very emotional as well. But I think with singing, there is something that is like tied to like your voice, like the, just the, the thing of the voice, like that, like emotion. So if you're, uh, I don't know, like if you're, if you have to sing this high note, you know, when you guys say cry or whatever, like that stuff, like you can't be tense. So I think it's very different. Like the mind work is so helpful in the singing realm. But I think with dance, you know, I, I just, and I think it's, it's how it's passed down from generations, you know, like, so my mentor, Cisco, you know, the training that he had and who he worked under, you know, they're tough. Um, and, and I look at that person and I think that they're amazing. And I know he trained under Brian Friedman and Brian is, you know, fantastic. Mm-hmm. And, but the people that trained Brian, again, everybody is like, you know, and as you go up the ladder, they're probably stricter as you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, as it, because they're now everybody is um, in the modern day, it's like, you know, you can't say this. And we have the pronouns and we have the this and the this and, the, and all these different things that are happening now where people are taking so much more care. You have to be so much more careful. But back in the day, get it together. Yeah. Your cut. Mm. You know, I remember seeing one time we were in company rehearsals <laughs> and we we're supposed to remember these routines. And one girl did and, and he was just like, you need to go. You need to leave. <laughs> we, wow. we saw her pick up a bag and she left the rehearsal and we were just like Whoa. wow but what does that do one to the person yeah. in some way so there's the there's the negative side right mm-hmm. where how does that affect the person yeah. but the teaching part of it is is that now they have a choice will they do that to themselves again because everybody else knew the routines right yeah. so or, and then for the rest of us it's like make sure you guys, you're on it. You're on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this, so now when I'm teaching, I have that sort of instilled, not that I do that, but I, I tell them, this is how we work. We're going to do the, this routine this week, next routine that week. Sorry, the same routine next week. And then I want to see it done by the third week. We have like three weeks, you know? And so by the, that expectation, but that's coming from the generation before, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. you just, you kind of pass down what you get taught whether sometimes it's the right way or the wrong way and... I think it is possible to chase excellence yeah and build in some understanding so the first thing I'm thinking in that situation is is we need to have a conversation with that person and say why has this not been learned right like, yeah is there something we can do to support you with it because maybe you learn in a different way or whatever now if that is fruitless then of course we have to say I'm sorry this isn't working mm-hmm. yeah. you know but I think that's that's the difference, isn't it? Is actually making the connection and finding out yeah. why it's going wrong, why it's happening, which yeah. maybe didn't happen before, but is definitely happening a lot more. And and is why I encourage all the performers I work with 
to go and have a conversation if they're struggling. Like yeah. go and talk to your company manager. Go. It's super scary to do, but actually now it's becoming something that companies really value because then they can help and then they end up with a better company and a better performance. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. I think we're all heading in a better direction than previously because um, it's, yeah, I think in the dance world, some things sometimes have been said that are like, you know, it's just, yeah. It's not okay. Yeah. And even, I mean, even in theatre and directing and all that stuff, it's like, yeah. We didn't actually do a, you know, what happens after Sylvia Young. Like, yes, how yes. Let's go back. To <laughs> Edit all that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah from before. <laughs> so it's um, start again. Just, yeah. to, um, just to fill in the blanks. So, uh, Sylvia Young happens. I finished Sylvia Young, loved it. It was brilliant. Then I got into a band. It was two boys, two girls, um, out of Sylvia Young. So they had like their own band. Um, and that, uh, it, I, I think I was in it for a year. And at the time I had gotten into lanes, but I decided not to go because I wanted to, to do the band. And then I was like, Oh, I don't think this is like really working for me. I feel like I want to get like an education or something. So I went and did two years of graphic design instead of continuing on and performing. But while I was doing that, I was um, I was on tour with an artist because the, the course was only three days a week, but it was a full time course. Um, so we did three days and then I would go to I remember one time we were in Brazil, which was amazing. And then I was at like these different festivals in town, like V-Fest and all these different things we were performing. Um, and then uh, I got a message from, I think her name was Jamie. Um, she basically, she was working for this agency um, and she said, what do you think about going into theater again? And I had sort of taken a step away from theater because I was doing like uh, a lot of commercial work and I was kind of like, I started assisting, sometimes choreographing even. Um, and I was assisting Cisco and, you know, helping out there. So then I, I went to audition for In the Heights and I remember thinking, I was like, oh, you know, I don't know about this, but I loved it. It was brilliant. And then I got into In the Heights and then from then on, I was like, this is it. Mm. Like, I love this. Because you get to dance, you get to sing, you get to act, you're expressing through all the channels, um, which was amazing. And then after that, it started to roll from there because um, then I got to do some films. I, you know, Heights was Lynn, so that's kind of tied over into Hamilton and then, um, and then, yeah, I kind of, I feel like I've done a few films that Lynn has been attached to, not by like uh, on purpose, but it just kind of worked out that way. So I was in Poppins while I was there with, uh, when he was there and then we were going into Hamilton. So he knew that I was going into Hamilton before I would even said anything to him, uh, which was interesting because he was on set and he was like, yeah, I know. And I was like, how do you know? How do you know that I'm doing this? It was coming up like, you know, and he was like, yeah, he'd seen, you know, there were a couple of us. So and and so I've sort of been in the theater space quite a bit. And then I would take some time out and then I might end up doing a bit of commercial stuff. And and then, yeah. And then I got into Mulan after the pandemic. It's Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge. Yeah. Not Mulan. Like, you know, <laughs> the, the Disney film. Uh, Moulin Rouge. And yeah. And then here we are, really. I think that's kind of... Something strikes me here. All the way through this conversation, you speak with great passion about dancing and singing. Yeah. Not at any point have you mentioned audience. Uh-huh. Okay. And I think that's quite interesting. Like, a lot of people I speak to were like, yeah. you know, I did my first... Andram thing, and okay. I, I just loved being in front of that audience. Or, audience. Mm. You know, do, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, it is, it really just makes me. Cool. I didn't even think about that. Wonder what the driving. For, I mean, clearly this was in you right, like from the start. Yeah. Is it the doing it more than the performing it? I for think you? so. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, there. I think there is definitely something about like, um, for me being on stage which is like, 
I know that something comes alive, like as a like a a switch or something. You know, like if I have to be on, it's like and be there, boom. And I do love the, the audience and stuff, but yeah, I think and maybe that's why I train so much and I love that side of stuff because to me it's like I think the audience and stuff, yes, brilliant, but it's the, the art for me comes first, the art and the craft of it. So I I really enjoy I, I um creating things as well and doing like my own videos and working in studios and things like that. So of course I love performing, but also I think I can be fulfilled if I collaborate with somebody, one person in a room, or if we have a great singing lesson and we you know we're doing the or we achieve something. Yeah, and I think that the audience they they always they come on board like last kind of kind of thing i feel it's not like that i really think about that i think if i if i can do the best that i can do then then that's going to be great and i think the other thing is i always feel like you know you just want to be able to move whoever it is does it change anything for you if the audience is saying that the brain doesn't necessarily know the difference between performance and rehearsal if you teach it performance so yeah feel that there's a that difference. something changes does does the audience yeah change what you do i think it i mean it gives you that extra adrenaline mm. for sure i think and especially even with things when it comes to like high singing and stuff sometimes actually having being in that space where you're like is fight or flight <laughs> you ha- you know because of the, the, everybody watching you you know and then suddenly the body just it's so it's intelligent it's on its own it has so it will do the extra thing we were doing the oliviers and i remember like we're we're behind the 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 things are about to open like this and it's four of us and we're like so i'm in this pose like this and i'm like oh my jesus like i just hope that i hit this note because this is going on camera this is like all of the the best performers are in this room i was like it's you know it's fine if in a show you know it's not exactly but this one this is it and we had done that like maybe four times for the day because we had we got there early in the morning and we had to do like a tech run a dress run and then like another dress run so I'm now like, oh my gosh, and this is the last day of the week. So we've done it, we've done eight shows and now we're doing um this performance. And then you know you have another eight shows to go mm-hmm. the next week because there's no break. So you're just like, ugh. And I remember the things open and the, the audience were just like, they just went wild. Like, and we were sort of like in silhouettes or whatever. And instantly, like all the the nervous like it just left. I don't know how. I don't know how it left. And I remember coming down and then it was just like, it was just free. Like, I was like, let's go. That's probably one of the most confident times I felt probably. Or like, it, it was, I remember we all came off and we were like, that was so much fun. Like all the, the three girls, we were like, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, I think that the audience can definitely lift and inspire and, you know, it makes it worth it. There's a yeah. talking going back to high notes and things. I think yeah. sometimes in the rehearsal room, in the practice room, actually sometimes the stakes are not high enough right. to yeah. warrant that sound. And this so is it, it feels yeah. really alien and a bit like, really, am I gonna make yeah. that? Sound? And space mm-hmm. as well. And space. Yeah. Right. And then suddenly actually you're on stage and there's an audience out there and it has to be right. And suddenly the stakes are in exactly the right place. And as you say, the body is yeah. so intelligent. It's it like, just... oh, okay, now this makes sense. Yeah, it's really weird. Because, yeah, for instance, like Chandelier, for instance, yeah. you know, like in the show, it's sometimes scary. It's it, like that's actually probably easier in the in in actuality than it is like in a studio or like in a room. Yeah. Sing the note. You're like... This is like, it's just it's the top of the, you know, how should you even like get onto the, you know, like whereas you're in the show and you're moving around or whatever and you know like that there's, you're playing it that way. So like the, the, the audience is so big, it's it's up and everything and you're, you know, so already your body sorts of just um does that. So yeah, I do think, I think that audio, it definitely changes. Yeah. um How things, how things go. But I guess the strive is to be able to do it on demand, in a small studio, on a mic or whatever it is, you know. So you've come sort of full circle a little bit because you, you started off performing. Yeah. Then 
went into teaching, a little bit of choreography in between, um, and now into producing your own uh, videos, yeah. short form that is encompasses all of those skills. Yeah. Tell me about Jump. Jump uh, is a video that I just did, and it's a dance-based video, um, which I think is going to be part one of possibly quite a few different parts, which I kind of want to join up together. Hopefully, maybe make a short film, maybe a pilot, if somebody wants to invest or something, you know, to just... Anybody? Yes, anybody. <laughs> um, because, no, I, I think what I... I love I love being in the films and and different things like that and I felt like I wanted to kind of be at the helm of it and see see what that was like and I what was fun about it is I was I was directing and then choreographing it and um and then it being in it and I love sort of getting to sort of hop around even on the day and we had a lot of fun we laughed a lot and that's the part where I think which kind of goes back even to what we were saying before. It's like the, if if you can have fun at, on the thing, that really makes it all worthwhile. So I was talking to some of the dancers and they just said, you know, thank you so much for like having us. Like it, we had such a great time and experience and stuff like that. So yeah. And then, and then to see the response, you kind of go shoot, like, that's it. Like, that's what I want. That's, that's how I want to feel at least, you know, that you can, you can make your own stuff that is, I think, true to me. It's true that I understand what's happening. And then it has like an impact. It's impactful for me, but it's also impactful for people that are watching it. Mm -hmm. um, and just to say like what happens in Jump is basically uh, there's an audition happening and uh, I, I'm i playing this character who we, we don't know their name yet, um, but basically he, the, the girls dance and then the, the boys dance and then he actually, he gets cut. Um, and then the video kind of ends there saying like to be continued. But the thing is the character is actually doing an amazing job. They're, you know, able to hit all the steps and they're they're correct with everything and whatever and they're actually central. Um, and I remember some people when they saw it, they were like, why did why did you get, like that's, that's not true. Like that's not, a, and I'm like, but that's actually what, that's the industry. It's like, it actually doesn't, you know. So I think in some ways, like, I guess it wasn't like maybe a comment on sometimes how things go. I was with some people on Saturday morning just after you'd released it. Oh, yeah. And who had seen it. And a couple were like, actually, that really brought a tear to my yeah. eye because that's uh, real. That's, that's real. real yeah. yeah. It's so hard. And then you, and you know, so for that character, you know, and in real in the reality is like you go away and you're like, why? What happened? Mm. Like, I don't understand. There was no feedback. It's just thank you. Yeah. And that's that's what happens. You all know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what happens. Because yeah. So, and you just you you wonder. Yeah, sorry, don't like, No, no, yeah. so is that the idea behind this sort of series then is to comment on things that happen in this industry? Uh maybe I think in this first part there is probably a comment on it. Yeah. Please don't nobody be upset with me for that. But you know, I just think I there mean, is that. Not, yeah, it's a real thing. It's a reflection of, no, yeah. not necessarily a comment and it's, on, but, yeah. you know. And then I think, but I, I I, just think it's, what I hope to sort of do is to be like, just continue on, just keep pushing. Because if you do, I think the right thing will come for you. That's kind of, I think, what I, I would like to say in the next coming things. But I think I, in isolation, it probably it is kind of like a comment to say, this is what happens. And it's very hard, but it's actually nothing to do with sometimes the, what you're doing, you know, yeah. is to do with, you know, and I've sat, I've, I've been on panels with like different casting teams or whatever, and I've sat in, listened to different things. And, you know, it's not always the person who is uh, the most talented or right, for the, you know, it's just like, who's right for the puzzle you know, that they're, that they, and that's, yeah. that's right. That's going to serve the, the thing. And I think it's hard. It's very hard for performers, you know, because you, you're striving, you're striving, you're striving. And then like, I guess there, I think there's space for everybody, but it's not always that there's space in that particular thing or in that particular thing. And then, or, you know, or in this moment, in this moment. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's tricky. Hang in, it, there. in this book is a question written by the previous guest. <gasps> 
And... I don't have to answer you have to answer the question. We've also not seen the question. Okay, this is actually a fantastic question for you in particular. Oh, God. <laughs> it's really good. If you could have made one change of direction in your career trajectory, what would it have been and when would, it, and when would you have made it? Wow. If I went to college, you know if that would have helped me get in the rooms for things better. Like, cause I, for a while, until I did Hamilton, it was like, Hamilton became like the ace card for me mm -hmm. where they would be like, oh, he's been in Hamilton. Great, we'll get him in the room now. But before that it was like, who are you? What have you done? And at this point I was, I was doing, you know, really good stuff, but it just for, for casting directors and stuff, they were like, he can't be seen for a role or he can't be seen for anything. So sometimes I think about that, but the reality of it is, it's like, you know, I think I'm grateful for where I'm at presently and the things that I've done. And it had to happen that way. That's how I feel. So I actually, I wouldn't change anything. And actually when I was younger, I wanted to go to Royal Ballet because I, I trained on a Saturday there while I was at Sylvia's. And I did, uh, yeah. And so I was, I was getting like <laughs> hip hop. It wasn't hard enough. Very, yeah, job. I know, right? Just doing wow. <laughs> this. I mean, guys, this is me. I'm always doing the most. <laughs> doing, uh, it's doing the hip hop company, training with adults at Sylvia's, and then you're, you're royal on a Saturday. Brilliant. And uh, I remember I said to my mom, and we actually argued about it because I was like, you know, I think I want to go and do that. I don't have the turnout to be a ballet dancer. I don't have the, I'm too short. I'm too, I'm too this, I'm too that. Like I remember my teacher, he loved me, the ballet teacher at Royal. He was like, but I just, I just don't think that this is, it's not the direction, you know, because there were others in the class who their facilities were incredible, but I could, I could move with them and stuff. But when you, if you put like a, you zoom into like my feet, the point is not correct. The turnout's not there. So, but, and I'm so happy that I stayed at Sylvia's. I'm so happy that I did, you know, I I did the graphic design course, for instance, you know, so I would say I'm just, I'm going with it as it comes. And I don't think I would, I would change anything because get, like getting to do Moulin Rouge and stuff like that was amazing. I feel like it was like the, a, I want to say amalgamation, like the pull in mm -hmm. of like everything from before, like I was, I was always training my voice during Hamilton, doing the most for no reason, because I'm in the ensemble. You know, they weren't, nobody was hearing me, but backstage I was doing voice exercises and, uh, and you know, and then cut to a couple of years later, now you have to do the thing and you're at the top of your range. So here we go, you know, so it's always been, so I feel like I'm, I'm on the journey and um, I, I'm always trying to put the best foot forward at each point. So wherever that lands me, you are that's it. Already? ever the sum of your parts yeah. so far yeah so and that's that's why i love these stories because yeah. i think we see from where you are now that this moment is the sum of all the parts that have come so far and it's really fantastic really thank cool. you thank you so so much thank you. could oh you gosh. write a question for our next yeah. guest, oh my please? gosh yeah Thank you so much for watching our episode today if you enjoyed it please subscribe so that you won't miss an episode in the future if you currently are or have been affected by any of the topics discussed in this episode, please see the show notes below for some helpful resources.